This video is going to be on simplifying radicals, the square roots. Later on, we'll talk about cube roots. What are square roots and what are perfect squares? You need to have a good idea of this column I'm pointing to now. Let's think about this. 2 squared, that means 2 times 2, which is 4. 3 squared, 3 times 3 is 9. 4 squared, 4 times 4 is 16. 5 squared, 5 times 5 is 25. So these numbers right here, 4, 9, 16, etc., those are all perfect squares. If I was to take the square root, if I said, what is the square root of 9? Well, what number times itself will give me 9? Nine? 9's perfect. The square root of 9 is 3. Okay, I do something corny here. I pretend that this square root is like they are in jail, but if they're perfect, they get out of jail. Yes, I know that's corny, but you won't forget now, right? 9 is perfect. It gets out of jail. The square root of 9, when it gets out of jail, it's a new and reformed number. It's 3. So, if I said, what is the square root of 16? 16 is perfect. It gets out of jail. And when it gets out of jail, it's a new and reformed person. The square root of 16 is 4. But we saw right here that 4 squared was 16. Now, we've talked a little bit about perfect numbers. Let's try to get a handle on when we're dealing with variables. This is algebra, you know. Okay, now we are going to discuss how do we know about perfect squares when, when we are working with variables. x to the first times x to the first. Do you remember when you multiply the same base, you add the exponent. So 1 plus 1 is 2. It's just like a little 1's in the air here in the exponent. x squared times x squared. 2 plus 2 is, that will be x to the fourth. x to the third times x to the third. Once again, when you multiply the same base, you add those exponents. 3 plus 3 is 6. That will be x to the 6. x to the 4th times x to the 4th. When you multiply the same base, you add those exponents. It'll be x to the 8th. So these variables, yes, they're all perfect. Do you notice something about those perfect variables? They're perfect squares. They're all multiples of 2. Do you notice that? 2, 4, 6, 8, they're all multiples of 2. If I had the square root of x to the 6th, is it perfect? Yes, it is. It is a multiple of 2. So what can I multiply times itself and get x to the 6th? It will be x to the 3rd. Now, I keep calling this the square root, this radical. If there is not an index here, I just assume it's 2, that it's a square root. If I don't put any, anything there, it is the square root. And notice this. If I take this 6, divide it by 2, I do get 3. 9 to the 1 half. This is a rational exponent. That's a fancy way to say, oh my goodness, that exponent is a fraction. We are not used to exponents being fractions. We're not used to having a number in the denominator. What this means is the same thing as the square root of 9 to the first. So if I saw a 9 to the 1 half, this bottom number, this is my root. So when I see a fraction, I know, oh, I am going to be dealing with radicals. Once again, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Let's continue. 
Here are four problems that we want to work. The square root of 8. How can I simplify that? Is there anything perfect in 8? I could change 8 to the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. Now, when we do a video on multiplying radicals, if they are both underneath the radical, you can multiply those. So radical 4 times radical 2 is radical 8. Now, when I say radical or square root, it's the same thing. So I broke 8 down to 4 times 2. I could have also written it as one big radical. Some people just like to break them down, but leave it under one big radical. But look at this. The square root of 4, well, 4 is perfect. 4 gets out of jail. And when 4 gets out of jail, it's a new and reformed number. It's perfect. Perfect of what? It's perfect of 2. Now, unfortunately, this radical 2 has to serve some more time. Now, once again, when we get to multiplying, we will learn that you cannot multiply numbers if one is underneath the radical and one is not. So that 2 radical 2 is my answer. Radical 12. I want to simplify radical 12. Well, you could break 12 down to 2 times 6. 2 times 6 is 12. But is 2 perfect? No. Is 6 perfect? No. Well, I'm not going to use those numbers if they're not perfect. I could also break 12 down into 4 times 3. 4 is perfect. Radical 4, that will be perfect of 2. And I can't do anything with the radical 3, so it will just hang out behind there. My answer is 2 radical 3. Now, some teachers will take radical 12. That could break that down to 2 times 6. I could break 6 down to 2 times 3. And they circle the ones that have 2 of them. And that is perfectly fine if you like doing it that way. I'm going to continue doing it by breaking it down and I'm thinking about my perfect numbers. Once again, what are those perfect numbers? The perfect numbers are numbers like 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49. These are perfect numbers squares. Let's continue. The square root of 27. A lot of times I will think about this number and I'll divide it by 2 and it won't work. I'll divide it by 3 and, I'm like, and I'll think, oh, well, that's 3 times 9. And I'll think, yay, because when I said 9, I knew that that was perfect. So I will break this down to 9 times 3. Radical 9 that's perfect. And when it gets out of jail, it's perfect of 3. It's new and reformed. And then this last radical 3 just has to hang out underneath the radical. Can I multiply this 3 and that 3? No. They both have to be underneath the radical if you're going to multiply them. So my answer is 3 radical 3. Radical 50. Does it have anything perfect in it? Can I break it down to anything that will help my cause? Could I use 5 times 10? Well, 5 times 10 is 50. But neither one of those are perfect. I'm trying to think of my perfect numbers. 50, when I divide it by 2, I get 25. And that's it. 25 is perfect. I will break 50 down into 25 times 2. Radical 25, that's perfect of 5. That will come out from underneath the radical because it is perfect. And it is a new number when it comes out. Then radical 2 will just hang out underneath the radical. My answer is 5 radical 2. Let's do a few that are a little bit more challenging. The square root of 72. 
this may be one of those times that you like the factor tree to break it down, but I'm going to stick with the way I like to do it. I'm going to do this a long way and then a short way. A lot of times when people think of 72, they think of 9 times 8, and 9 is perfect. So it's not like that's a horrible choice, 9 times 8 is 72. Radical 9 is perfect, so it will come out from underneath the radical, and when it comes out, it will be 3, and that radical 8 is still there. But wait, I can do more. I'm not done. Radical 8, well, that could be radical 4 times 2. 4 is perfect of what? 2. Now watch this. Radical 4 is perfect of 2. It came out. Now 3 and 2 are both outside of the radical. So yes, I can multiply them. That would be 6 radical 2. But guess what? I'm going to do it another way. So if I had the square root of 72, now what I like to do is I like to take the number under the radical and just real quickly, I can use my calculator, but I just like to say, uh, divide it by 2, what do you get? Divide it by 3, divide it by 5. And I like to just see if it gives me a nice, pretty square number. Well, when I take 72 and divide it by 2, are you ready? I get 36. 36. Isn't that one of our perfect squares? So I'm going to break 72 down into 36 times 2. 36 times 2 is 72. The square root of 36, 36 is perfect. It comes out from underneath the radical as 6. And then radical 2 just hangs out. And you know what I'm going to say. That's not magic. That is mathematics. Let's do another one. The square root of 24, 2 times 12 is 24, 3 times 8, 4 times 6, 4. 4 is perfect. So I am going to break 24 down into 4 times 6. 4 is perfect, so it comes out from underneath the radical. It will be 2 radical 6. Now, radical 6, yes, it's 2 times 3, but that will not help me, so I will just leave it radical 6. Okay, are you ready to do a little work with variables? We discussed earlier these perfect squares when we were dealing with variables, and we noticed that all of the exponents were multiples of 2. Do you believe that x to the 11th is the same thing as x to the 10th times x to the 1st. 11 was an odd number, not even. I wanted it to be a multiple of 2. I just went down to x to the 10th because it is a multiple of 2. But I can't just change it to x to the 10th. x to the 11th is the same thing as x to the 10th times x to the 1st. But x to the 10th is perfect. It comes out what times what is x to the 10th? I hope you're saying x to the 5th. We'll talk more about that in just a second. And then the square root of x to the 1st, or just x, will just hang out underneath the radical because it is not perfect. Now, once again, remember, I take that number and I divide it by 2. That's how I got x to the 5th. And I also showed you about how to write radicals as rational exponents. If I did have the square root of x to the 10th, I told you that it can also be written as x to the 10 divided by 2. And 10 divided by 2 is 5. Once again, you will learn more about variables with rational exponents a little bit later. Okay, the square root 
of y to the ninth. This is a square root, so I want a multiple of 2. 9 is not a multiple of 2. I'm going to drop down to y to the 8th times y to the 1st. And the square root of y to the 8th, and this square root of y to the 1st just hangs out. It is not perfect. How many of you are wanting to say y to the 3rd? You know that the square root of 9, the number 9, is 3. But this 9 is not a number. This 9 is an exponent. We have different rules when we are working with exponent. So just be sure that you know that the number 9 and the exponent 9 are different. Okay, so the main thing that we learned in this video on simplifying radicals is how to recognize perfect squares. So if I take the square root of a number, such as the square root of 121, if it is perfect, then it gets out from underneath the radical. Yes, 121 is perfect. It comes out from underneath the radical and it is 11. So we learned how to recognize perfect squares with numbers and with variables.